This is part 18 of JavaScript tutorial. In this video, we'll discuss for loop in JavaScript. To understand for loop, let's write a simple program that's going to prompt the user to enter a number. For example, if the end user provides number 10, then we want this program to print all even numbers starting from 0 till number 10. First, let's write this program using while loop and then we'll see how to rewrite the same example using for loop. Along the way, we'll look at the differences between while and for loop. Here, we have the program already written using while loop. Notice that we are using the prompt function to prompt the user to enter a target number. This prompt function is going to return the number in text format. We want to convert that to a number. For that, we are using the number function. And we are storing that number in this variable target number. Here we have another variable called start which is initialized to zero. And we have the while keyword within the brackets we have the boolean condition. And if this condition becomes true we are writing the value that is present within the start variable to the document. And finally we are incrementing the value that is present within the start variable by two. Let's look at how this program works when we enter number 10. So when we run the program it's going to prompt the user to enter target number. And for example, if we enter 10 within this target number variable, we'll have number 10 stored. And start will contain 0. And then it will come to this line. Is 0 less than or equal to 10? The condition is true. So it goes inside the while loop and then prints the value that is present in the start variable. At the moment, start contains 0. So it's going to print 0. And then it will increment the value that is present within the start variable by 2. At this point, start variable contains 2. So it's going to come back and check the condition. Is 2 less than or equal to 10? The condition is still true. It's going to print number 2 and then increment it by 2 again. So this process will be repeated as long as this Boolean expression is true. The moment start variable is greater than target number, the condition will become false and there is nothing else after the while block so the JavaScript program terminates. I have this exact same program already typed within Visual Studio. Let's quickly run this. Let's enter number 10 as the target number. Click OK. We should have all even numbers starting from 0 till 10. Now. There are three things as far as this while loop is concerned. The first thing is variable initialization. Notice the initialization of start variable is done at one place, that is outside of the while loop, right here. And then the Boolean condition check. The condition check is done at another place, that is within the brackets of the while loop. So here we are checking the condition. And then updating the variable that participates in this Boolean expression so that this condition will become false at one point is done right here. Okay, now what is going to happen if we don't update this variable? In that case, this condition will never become false because start will always be zero and this will lead to an infinite while loop. Okay, so all these three things, that is variable initialization, condition check, and updating the variable that participates in the Boolean expression are done at three different places in a while loop. Now let's see how this is going to change with a for loop. With for loop, all the three things, that is variable initialization, condition check, and updating the variable that participates in the Boolean expression can be done in one place. And here is the syntax for that. Also remember, all these three things are optional in a for loop. We'll look at an example of that in just a bit. First, let's look at the syntax. For while loop, we'll start with the for keyword, and within the brackets, we'll have all the three things, that is variable initialization, condition check, and the expression to update the variable that participates in the Boolean expression. And then within the brackets, we'll have the statements that we want to execute if this condition becomes true. So how does this for loop execute? First, the initialization code runs, and then it checks the condition. If the condition is true, it will execute the statements that are present inside the for loop block. And after that iteration, it updates the variable. I mean, this statement will be executed. And then it checks the condition again. 
and then if the condition is true it's going to execute this statement the moment the condition becomes false you know it's going to execute i mean skip the for loop and then execute the statements that are present after the for loop now let's see how to rewrite the same program using for loop so we will start with the for keyword and within the brackets we'll have three different things that is variable initialization so let's move this variable initialization into the head section of the for loop. So that's variable initialization. And then we have the Boolean condition check here. Followed by that, we will have the expression to update the variable that participates in the Boolean expression. So let's take that and move it to the for loop head section. Now let's rerun this one and see if it's going to work the same way as it did before. So it should prompt us to enter a target number. Let's provide 10 as the target number. Click OK, and we should have even numbers from 0 till 10. So the program is working the same way. This time, we are using a for loop instead of a while loop. Now, we also discussed that all these three things, that is variable initialization, condition check, and the expression that updates the variable that participates in the Boolean expression are optional in a for loop. Now, if it's optional, then I can remove this. I will simply have a semicolon. In this case, notice that we are moving variable initialization outside of the for loop head. So we have the initialization here. And then I just have a semicolon here to indicate that the initialization is not done here. Now, after the first semicolon, we have the condition. And then after the second semicolon, we have the expression that's going to update the variable participating in the Boolean expression. Now let's run this and see if it still works the same way. So let's enter 10 as the target number. Click OK. Notice that we get all even numbers starting from 0 till 10. Now let's see you know, if we move this condition check elsewhere, is it still going to work? Just like variable initialization, the condition check is also optional in a for loop. That means we can move it elsewhere. So I'm going to remove that and move it inside the for loop block. So let's actually paste that here. Now I'm going to use an if statement here. If start is actually greater than target number, then what I want to do is break out of the for loop. Now, this break statement is required. Otherwise, this will become a never-ending for loop. Now, first, let's run this and see if it works the same way uh, as it did before. And then we'll comment this and see the behavior of this program. So let's run this now. So it should prompt us to enter the target number. So let's go ahead and enter number 10. Click OK. So it's printing even numbers from 0 till 10. And the moment start is greater than target number, you know, it's going, this condition will be true. It executes this statement. It's going to break out of the for loop. Now, if this condition is not here, so I have commented these lines, okay? Now, let's go ahead and run this. We don't have a condition within the for loop now, which means when we enter number 10, click OK, the condition will always be true by default. Look at this. Now it's in a never-ending for loop. That's why we should have some way to break out of the for loop. And this is going to ensure that we will break out of the for loop when the value that is present in the start variable is greater than the target number. Now, even the expression that is updating the variable that's participating in the Boolean expression is also optional. So let's move this again inside the for loop. Okay, now if you look at this for loop, we just have two semicolons the variable initialization, condition check, and the expression that updates the variable. All three are at different places, just like a while loop. Okay, but we're using for keyword here. Let's rerun this and see if it works the same way as it did before. Let's enter number 10, click OK. Notice that it prints even numbers from 0 till 10. Thank you for listening and have a great day.